Okay, I am gonna try this again today while I'm driving and see if that thing stays put where I have it. So I'm gonna put my sunglasses on and I will chat and hopefully my phone isn't gonna fall down off of the windshield while I'm talking. We'll find out. All right, so what in the world shall I talk about today? Today, I'm going to talk about diet and nutrition and my history with all of that. I See, that made me jump because I thought my phone was going to fall off. I'm trying this windshield doodle to hold my phone on there and it's not very secure yet. So I'm still kind of scared that it's just going to fall off because it's done that before. So we'll see what happens. Anyhow, so I have not left a video on this channel for a long time now um, and I'm hoping to change that. I hope to be more consistent and persistent about building my YouTube channel. Even though I'm just me and I don't, I don't know how interesting what I have to say is to anybody else. But I guess it's interesting to me, <laughs> so there's that. So anyhow, you know, about diet and nutrition, it has freaking been a huge obsession for me for a long time. I remember a time in my life when diet wasn't an obsession with me, but it was a, lo a long time ago. In fact, my sweetheart, Jeff, um, says to me so sometimes, he said it at least once, he doesn't like harp on me about it or anything, he's so sweet and good with me, but, um, and so easily, you know, goes along with whatever my program is for the day or the week or whatever, but, um, but, oh, I should have gone, oh, I really should have gone, but, uh, he's, he said to me before that he um, remembers a time when I wasn't so obsessed with what I eat, you know, that I was more flexible about what I eat. And that's true. When he and I first got together, we were 35. And, you know, even though personally my weight has been a concern ever since I was a teenager, um, even though I, I would never consider myself having been obese, I've always had that extra 20 pounds, you know, 20 or 30 pounds that I'm carrying around. It's just like, oh. So that has always been a thing for me, but it's never been, it was never about um, health so much. It was more just about weight and vanity. You know what I mean? Um. I wanted to feel like I looked good in my clothes and out of my clothes, right? But it was never really about health and nutrition. That wasn't a big concern for me, you know, when I was 35. But it wasn't very long after that that things started becoming about health. And I remember specifically when I started worrying about health issues related to diet and that was in about 2006 and or seven um my dad had been struggling with his health for a few years already um and his health was declining and so um that was really you know on my mind and bothering me, but he was, you know, in his 60s, and even though that was still young to me at 35, I was going, well, you know, that's really sad that he's having issues and stuff, but I didn't know anything about diet and nutrition. I didn't know how to help him, um, and I hadn't really um, explored that, you know, the relationship um, between food and health ironically to me that's just crazy it's like duh it's a direct correlation um in my mind 
not just in my mind. I know scientifically, you know, there's evidence, plenty of evidence to support that diet is directly related to your health. But I, had, I hadn't been exposed to any of that yet. So it was mostly just about weight for me back then. But, um, but the, the catalyst wasn't even really my dad yet. I mean, it kind of was. I was trying to find some stuff on the internet that might be helpful for him. I specifically remember I was working as, um, as a support person, a customer support person at a company called Tektronics in Beaverton, Oregon. And if there's some construction here, I'm supposed to be prepared to stop. So we'll see what happens here. Give me just a second here while I'm slowing down for these workers. Um, but anyhow, um, I remember um, doing some research on my dad's behalf about things that could benefit um, cognition, you know, mental health, because my dad was brilliant was always brilliant. He was an aeronautical engineer. He was he had meticulous handwriting. I mean, not that that really means anything, but he was just freaking brilliant. And his disease, his the, the decline of his, his health, um, part of that, not all of it. He'd had a couple of heart attacks. He started having many strokes. He was having all kinds of health problems, but a big component that really, really bothered me was his cognition was in decline, his memory and his ability to function and, and retain, you know, memories. So anyway, I was looking into, I started doing some research on that. So that had to have been sometime between 2000, it was probably 2004 or five when I first started looking into, is there something that can be done with the diet that would benefit, that can benefit cognition and brain health. And so, and I learned about curcumin and that in India, they have a freaking 90% less incidence of Alzheimer's than we have in the United States. I was like, 90% less? Are you kidding me? What is that about? Why, why would they have so much less cognitive dysfunction, you know, at, at, with age, like Alzheimer's and, and dementia and stuff than we have in the United States. What is that about? So I started doing research into that and I found out that one of the, one of the concepts, one of the beliefs is that it's because they consume way higher turmeric and curcumin in, on a daily basis in their diet and that that has benefit or like cleaning out the plaque and the, in the arteries and capillaries and stuff in the brain it, throughout the body, but which also includes in the brain. So that was my very first introduction to that I can think of that really made me think, you know, diet and health. Um, aside from just weight loss and stuff, right? Because I knew that obviously if you weigh less, you know, you're going to be healthier. Um, and probably longevity and stuff too. But, um, so that was my first thing that I remember. But aside from that, the biggest catalyst for me after that was in 2007 when my younger nephew, uh, he was a couple years younger than me, um, Floyd. He was my favorite cousin. I just loved him to pieces. And he got um, diagnosed with a brain tumor the size of a softball and that just blew my mind he was such an outgoing friendly fun loving guy one of those guys that he will just help anyone and everybody just loves him and uh, he was a he was a building contractor and he had his own business and he was like he was just a great guy and he got this tumor and so that just freaked me out. And so I started doing some research to find out if there's anything I could find out that might help him, you know, to beat this disease. 
And um, anyhow, within a year and a half, he, he was dead. He died. And so I know that he did try some um, dietary approaches and stuff, but nothing helped him. And I don't know exactly what all he did, but, um, but that was when I learned about raw foods. And so I just have gone through this transition of um, different dietary protocols uh, that, you know, could benefit my health. And so, anyhow, this is a long story, but, um, you know, it's always been about improving my health and doing, doing that so that, not only for my own health, but so that, you know, my children and the rest of our family members might achieve greater health. So anyhow, um, the roundabout story about that is, and it's kind of ironic because back when I was 20, before any of that other stuff even happened, um, I, wanting to lose weight, was introduced to or found out about the Atkins diet plan because I'd already been on several diet dietary protocols ever since I was a young teenager. You know, I'd done slim fast and I'd done like, I don't know, but I, the most success I had had was when I was 20 and I found out about Atkins and I went on that diet and in three months I lost 30 pounds, 30 plus pounds. So I, I'm 5'9", so I'm, I'm pretty tall and I don't have a, a, like a large, I don't have large bones. I still, I have small bones even though I'm tall. Um, but I weighed 153 back then when I was 20 and I was like, oh my gosh, because I always wanted to be a fashion model when I was a teenager. So I was like, oh my gosh, 150. Now I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like, that's my ideal weight for my, for my height. But anyway, I was freaked out. So I, you know, as a model, you want to weigh right around 120 if you're 5'9". So, or even a little bit less, which is emaciated, really. So anyway, I did Atkins the first time ever and I was really diligent and stuck to it and I ended up losing 33 pounds in three months and I got down to a size five and it was pretty amazing and I was really happy with the way I looked and everything but that wasn't sustainable for me I, I went to Germany right after that and you know was introduced to like bratwurst and brooch and brooches, sausages and pastries and beer and wine and everything and I was like <laughs> that the low carb thing went right out the window for me and I tried it a few times ever since then and I never had the same kind of success so fast forward to 2007 when I was introduced to the raw foods diet I had gotten, so by 2009, I had gotten to an all-time high of 194 pounds. That is 14 pounds heavier than I was at nine months pregnant with my first child. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, I did raw foods. So, in the interim, between Atkins at 20 and raw foods at, what, I don't know, 45 or something. Um, I had just eaten whatever I ate, you know, and just kind of struggled with my weight, but, you know, didn't like really find a program that worked for me. I tried Weight Watchers, I tried a few different things, and tried low carb a few times, and with never the same success. So, raw foods. And I, again, I lost 30 pounds in a relatively short period of time, not three months. But I was diligent. I stuck to the raw foods plan. And, um, but I started having all kinds of other problems. But I was going through menopause at the time. My hormones were all over the map. And, uh, and 
I just freaking, you know, couldn't do raw foods anymore because um, my I was having horrendous joint pain and I thought it was related to my diet, my raw foods diet, and I still don't know if it was the diet or if it was my hormones or if it was a combination of both. But I don't have the joint pain anymore, thank goodness, and haven't had for years. And I'm way past that whole hormone thing. So I don't know if it was related or not. Um, but, but I don't really do raw foods so much. I mean, I eat a high percentage of raw foods now. But I've really kind of fluctuated between keto, the ketogenic diet, and the high carb, low fat, plant-based diet. And I was really kind of strongly leaning towards keto because I'm Swedish, I have Swedish heritage, so I figured, you know, they all ate lots of meat and stuff, you know, and so my DNA, blah. But then I watched a video that I will um, I'll link below that um, compared keto to low fat, high carb, whole food plant based and it just made so much sense to me and so that kind of solidified in my mind you know I my biggest thing now it, it is still weight loss but it's that secondary for me now now it's mostly about health first health first you know, disease prevention. I don't freaking want diabetes. I don't want heart disease. I don't want to go through what my parents went through. Oh, sidebar, um, in 2015, in November of 2015, my mom passed away from breast cancer. And that was huge for me. And she suffered with horrendous breast cancer for years, for at least a decade she finally passed in November of 2015 and so I'm really motivated to find and stick to a, a dietary path that will um, be preventative of disease hopefully I'm, I'm all about you know the whole ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure and I totally believe that so I'm doing my best to prevent anything, um, any chronic disease. And so I, I believe from the research I've done that um, whole foods plant-based just has more evidence to support uh, that as being the best um, dietary approach for humans. Um, better than, you know, better than doing the animal base. So anyhow, that is my little rant for today. Um, so I'm doing, I'm following that and I've just decided as long as I don't have symptoms in my body, that's the thing. That's the caveat. Um, I will stick to a program or a protocol as long as I am not experiencing negative, um, repercussions in my body. But if I am, then I will, you know, make an adjustment and do something different. But for right now, for right now, Whole Foods Plant Based is working for me. I'm not, I'm not rapidly losing weight, but I am feeling good. I'm sleeping well. I'm not having any symptoms. And I'll talk about the symptoms I was experiencing before in another video. But, um, but anyway, that's what I'm doing. And I'm committed to doing that until and unless I have symptoms that dictate otherwise. So you should tell me about your dietary experiences because I would love to know what your life has been like with regard to diet and nutrition. Are you as confused as I am? Have you been tossed to and fro? <laughs> you know, what is your story? I would love to hear it. I am 57 and a half years old. Uh, I'm feeling like I'm doing pretty good for my age. Um, I, but I do want to get my fitness thing 
handled and get my weight down, I have about 30 pounds to lose and then I'll be happy. Then I'll be happy. <laughs> you know, it's always about trying to figure out what's going to make me happy. No, I just want to be healthy and fit. Um, and I want to live a long, healthy life. I don't freaking want to like be diseased. That's not life to me. That's not living. You know, people, longevity, just because you live a long time, if you don't have quality of life, if you're not functional, then to me, I'd rather be dead. I don't, that's not living. That's just existing and I don't want to freaking exist. I want to live fully and juice life for all it's worth. So anyway, uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'll just say the requisite thing. Please subscribe and hit the little bell doodle thing that everybody always says you're supposed to get notifications for. And uh, I will really do my best to start posting at least once a week. I know I've said that before and I haven't followed through and I'm sorry, but I will try harder this time. All right, have a great rest of your day and then I will look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. Please comment, I'd love to hear from you. Take good care, talk to you soon.